essentially what happened is I contacted 200 professors at Johns Hopkins University and the National Institutes of Health. And Disclosing Alpha, your age? Uh, yes, I was just like, hi, I'm 14, and so let me into your lab. And of course, I sent them like a procedure, materials list and that, and I got 199 rejections. And I realized one thing, like, but you got one. Yes, I finally got one. It was a maybe, though. And I realized that professors, like, their face, like, their profile picture doesn't really match up with how nice they are at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... That, I think, is also clear in the Congolese jungle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, carry on. But um, essentially what happened is I finally got into this lab space, and I kind of, once again, just, like, beat at this problem for about seven months trying to make the sensor. The maybe let you into the lab. Yeah, the maybe after, like, this, like, hour-long interrogation where he, like, calls in PhDs, and they're all, like, firing these questions, and they're, like, it was, it was pretty intense in there. I bet they were excited, though. Oh, um, it didn't show on their faces. They were, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're at a very dangerous point here, which I'll come back to in a moment, and I'll pick you up there. But I just want to now get to this point at which you've understood something we've all claimed as workers, mm -hmm. that buildings do suffer from sick building syndrome. Um, and you, you've got a solution. Yes. But it's... Carry on. Okay, so basically my solution is that I have, I've created this filter which is based on plant species. And as these volatile organic compounds, which are basically chemical pollutants, anything that emits or center a smell in our home, as they come into contact with these plant species, the plants will metabolically break them down into harmless byproducts like carbon dioxide and water vapor. So these microorganisms are using these pollutants as an energy source, and at the same time, we're benefiting because we get clean air. So I have run all of this at, at a simulation level in the basement of my home, and the results are very Without prompt. becoming extremely ill. Yes, exactly. So it's all like a controlled environment. Um, so just like Jack, I didn't have very much access to a lab in my, in, in my area, so um, I just did everything using materials based on like a high school budget. And so it was, it was a really cool experience because I was able to build everything on my own, and the solution is a very cost-effective and sustainable one that ideally could be implemented anywhere in the world. Have you patented it? Um, right now I'm working on that. So it's in a very provisional like research stage right now, and so I'm working on getting a provisional patent for it. And that's the $64,000 question with you, because the fact is you're sitting there with a whole lot of PhD students and a maybe professor who might or might not help. They're going to steal your idea. Oh, well, luckily uh, that didn't happen. So <laughs> I'm rather glad that didn't happen. But um, essentially I ended up with one small paper sensor that costs three cents and it takes five minutes to run. So it's over 168 times faster, over 26,000 times less expensive, and over 400 times more sensitive than current ones. And you can broadly extend it to pretty much any disease, ranging from Alzheimer's to heart disease, other forms of cancer, and even HIV AIDS. And I do have the international patent on it. Yeah. <laughs>